Welcome everyone. In my presentation today, I'll speak about an illustrious redemptress from the French province of Saint Anne de Beaupre, Father Alfred Pampalin, who was born in the city of Lévy, near the picturesque Quebec City, on the 24th of November 1867. Father Alfred's parents were very devoted Catholics. His father, Jacques-Antoine Pampalin, was orphaned when he was only eight years of age and decided to be a stonecutter three years later. He was a hard-working man, renowned for his impeccable honesty and his exemplary temperance. He would later become a much-esteemed entrepreneur. He built many churches and one of his famous works consisted in completing the magnificent Basilica of Saint Anne de Beaupre. His mother, Josephine Dorian, was also reputed for being a devoted Christian. They wed in 1856 and had 12 children. Five died in their early age and out of the remaining seven, four would later be consecrated to the Lord of which two became redemptress. Alfred soon became his mom's favorite. On the outside, he appeared to be frail and delicate. One day, his mother's friend said to her, how feeble is your little one? And Josephine replied, I don't think he's going to live very long, but if he's small before men, he will be tall before God. Alfred was constantly praying with his mother. They would speak about God and our Holy Mother all the time, and he was always thrilled to go to church. I guess that's why his mother often said, that's my little saint. Although this family was no doubt in God's highest favors, the time of trial began when Josephine had her 12th child on the 28th of June, 1873. Caught with a serious fever that would soon become mortal, she calls the priest and her children to her bedside. And then turning to her favorite little saint, she prayed, O oh Mary, I consecrate this child that loves you so. I give him to you. Take good care of him so he will love you always. Josephine died on the feast of the visitation of Mary on the 2nd of July, 1873. She was 46 years of age. Alfred was only five and a half and Antoine, the elder, 15. Alfred rushed to the Virgin Mary's feet and said in a sobbing voice, Good and holy Mother Mary, I have lost my mother on earth. You must now become my mother. Alfred's father was now alone with eight children. He remained widower for a year before remarrying to Marguerite Fallon. They had many children together, and Marguerite loved Alfred as if he was her own. She would say to her friends, he's so gentle and caring. He's not like the others. He's like a little lamb and so devoted to the Holy Virgin, and he obeys so freely. One of his cousins, Catherine, said one day, we have never seen him angry. And when his brothers or sisters would argue or fight, he would intervene and try to make them change their minds. In preschool, everyone thought highly of him. His teachers noted how attentive he was in church, never turning his head like the others, and often reciting his Our Father all over again, thinking he had not said it with enough devotion. In his eighth grade, his friends noticed that he always had his rosary with him and referred to the Blessed Virgin in terms of my gracious mother. Practically everyone believed he was going to become a priest, but despite his discipline for prayers and virtues, he did not witness any desire for priesthood. His father respected that. He later gave his son an opportunity to study at the Levy College. Alfred entered when he was 10 and remained there for 10 years. His teachers said his intellect was average, but he was relentless at work and irreproachable in all fields. Until 1881, Alfred was studying in the commercial field and had never really felt the call to priesthood, but during that year, he's then 14 years of age, a drastic change occurs. He leaves the commercial course and begins the classical course. Sickness, he said, made me realize that it was not in this field that God wanted me. My confessor agreed on this matter. He also admits that his second sickness played a leading role in his vocation. This time, not only did he promise to be totally consecrated to God, but he made a personal vow. Suddenly, his sickness disappeared. And from then on, 
no other obstacle would deter him from his vocation. He then decided to follow his older brother's footsteps by joining the Redemptress community. On the 8th of September, he made his profession on the feast of the Nativity of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. He then followed the seminarian program. Two years of philosophy in Latin, which were very tough years for him, and three years of theology. On the 4th of October, 1892, Alfred is ordained priest and will remain in Belgium for the next year. Soon after his first assignment, he feels pain in his side, but the doctor doesn't think it's serious. He prescribes rest. Our word our virtuous father does not feel so much at ease with, considering he wants to save many souls, but he will respond, Oh my Lord, if you don't want me to do missions, I don't want either. The following year, because of his poor health, he will only participate in a few missions. His health continues to deteriorate. He now has a dry cough, night perspiration, stabbing pain in his back, and suddenly he begins to spit blood. He's diagnosed with phthisis or consumption, a form of tuberculosis. The only possible remedy, if it occurs, is complete rest. In his community, when his converse spoke about healing, he replied, Oh, let the Lord decide. If I don't heal, so be it. I'll be in heaven earlier. His nurse said he desired heaven so much that he was indifferent to any medication. He took whatever they would give him, but he did not want to suppress pain. In 1895, the doctor and his superior send him back to St. Anne de Beaupre hoping for his convalescence. On their way, the sea raged, and Father Alfred suffered for seven days like a martyr, never even complaining. They arrived in the port of Quebec City on the 15th of September, 1895. A few months later, he's transferred to the monastery's infirmary, one of his lungs is completely corrupted. Again, he abandons his will to God and calls the infirmary the vestibule of heaven. On the feast of St. Alphonsus, his confers tell him they asked their founder to give Father Alfred some relief. But Father Alfred told him not to ask for that, but rather to have the grace to suffer even more. His prayer was answered. Dropsy occurred on the feet, then the legs, and the whole body, and finally his face swelled up considerably. His body was completely covered with wounds. He had no comfortable position to rest or sleep for the next months. He finally died like a saint on the 30th of September, 1896. Exactly one year before St. Teresa of the Infant Jesus, who died of the same sickness. On the day of his funeral, hundreds of people gathered in the basilica to revere their saint, some even cutting out pieces of garment from his habit. Many great miracles have occurred soon after his death, but he is still known for his powerful intercession for people addicted to alcohol and drugs. His remains are presently exposed for public veneration in a tomb located in the lower church of the Basilica. And I now give you my blessing in French. Que Dieu Tout-Puissant vous bénisse, le Père, le Fils et le Saint-Esprit. Amen.